Okay, so in this tutorial, we are going, I'm going to show you um, kind of a, a more advanced way to use the uh, live selection tool um, to create a soft selection to make a, it's really a more complex leaf tutorial and how to, how to make something like that that has curl and curve to it. And so it's going to be, you know, two parts. The first part is how to model that leaf. And the second part is how to um, then bend and mold that model. And so we're going to start with um, a philodendron leaf. And so what I want to do is I want to go to my top view. This is where I'm going to basically be doing all of the modeling for this. And I've created, I downloaded an image online of a philodendron leaf. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my options. I'm going to go down to configure. I'm going to go to back and I'm going to find that image. And so um, in my case, I know that it is in this folder. It's this image right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit open, right? So this is the leaf that I'm going to be modeling. Now, um, I chose a flat one. Typically, they, right, they're, they're folded and bent and everything, but I wanted to show you, right, there's all of these, like, cutouts here that could be potentially pretty tricky to, um, to model. So... Let's go ahead and get started. Now, um, typically, right, we want the transparency to be a little bit lower. Something else we could do, we're gonna be doing this with the polygon pen tool. Um, and so what I may do is I may just come up here to start um, and try and figure out where I wanna start making my polygons from. Now, one of the ways you can use a polygon pen tool is by creating what's called quad strip mode. And the way that that works is a little different than point mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and go down to the bottom of the image. I know this frond actually extends much further and probably has weight to it. Maybe I should actually start further up here, but this is just to show what the strip mode does. So in quad strip mode, what I do is I click once to create a point, click a second time to create a point, click a third time, click a fourth time. And then as I go forward, if I click twice, it just pops this next quad Right, and so one of the things when we're gonna when we're gonna be deforming something a lot and doing it manually is we want enough geometry to make that um, plausible <laughs> and not too insane, um, but not so much geometry that um, that we uh, um, end up um, causing ourselves a lot of uh, pain and suffering. And so I'm going to continue this strip of polys all the way up to the tip of the leaf. Um, and then we're going to build out from there. Right. So this will just be my you know, center line. And you can see I'm trying to keep these somewhat um, set. And I'm also intentionally having them split, you know, kind of even around the um, center uh, vein on this leaf. And you'll notice that I've made a couple of mistakes in terms of like, the, these points aren't exactly uh, square, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to keep going up and up. Uh, and somehow I, met, I fell off the polygon. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so I've got that. I'm going to hit escape. I've got that strip set. Now, it is hard to see what I'm doing against this. And so one of the things I could do is I could go to option. I could go to display. And I could either go to quick shading, hidden lines, or garage shading, right? Whatever the case, the garage shading, like it, it shows me those polygons, like where I've done it, and it makes it a little easier to see um, against this background. So you can see I've got these points where maybe I messed up. All I have to do is hover over them and then just click and drag on the point, and I can adjust them, right? And so some of these polygons are a little bit much. Um, I might be able to pull a polygon out here, but really... I can also just click on these edges and right and pull this thing down, even though I'm in points mode. What's really nice about this tool is that it, oops, is it does have some freedom. If I accidentally pull a, um, like start pulling an edge where I don't want to, I just hit escape to get rid of that. Right, and so I'm going to make sure these are evenly spaced. And one of the other things is they're definitely a little too big in here, and these points should be a little bit more square to each other. Um, and, you know, what I really want to think about, too, is like, where are these um, where are these lobes coming out? Because that would be a probably a pretty good place to have an intersection between two polygons. So as I go forward, right, 
if I was to come out here and say, click to create a poly and then snap it back here, right? This allows me to create geometry a little bit more, um, uh, right, effectively. But the idea is that we match, you know, all these polys that we create roughly to the shape of the leaf. And I could um, go in and make, you know, do a little bit more. Um, but in this case, um, you know, maybe I want another strip actually here. So let's go ahead and right, pull this in. Um, I could always extrude out from the edge, like select all these edges and extrude the entire edge out to get more geometry as well. Um, but I just know that I'm probably going to want about right this much geometry. And so then if I'm in quad strip mode, I can just continue to come up here. Oops. If I do it the right order, I can continue to, oh boy, let me undo some, I did something wrong here. To, there we go. Now it's better. And then I can just come up here and I can just kind of zigzag my way up to the terminal. Oops. Undo. Yeah, zigzag my way up to the terminal point on this um, piece. And now, right, I'm not in a place where I can go any further, so I hit escape. And I'm going to just continue to do this process, right? And the question is, you know, it looks like the way I've set this up, I probably need more geometry in here than I've got room for with this, um, with this center polygon here. Um, but maybe we can just go ahead and let's just go ahead and make these big. I hit escape, and then I'm going to try here to here to here. Oops. Um, in this case, actually. I might want to switch back from quad strip mode to um, to the other mode, and so what I can do is I can just right. If I now it's much faster for me to do it this way. Now I'm making these are like way too large, and so I'm going to need to probably do a cut down through here. But I can do that um, once I get done with these other polygons. Now something I probably should have done here as well is undone that and hit escape. And um, I can actually hold down control and I can click and drag to pull edges out. So this is another way I can work is if I hold down control, I can click and drag and I can actually, if I can say, oh, these are probably the polygons I actually wanted. And I should, what I should have done is um, set this up ahead of time. Um, and then now I can go here to here, right? And that's actually going to close this whole thing off. But I can go in and I can create edges, right? So I can come in here and I can click and drag to create more subdivisions on the surface, right? I don't need to use the knife tool. I can actually come in and manually do this, right? So the question, so depending on how you like to work, um, is going to really de determine um, how this goes. And I don't need to continue these edges down if I don't want to, um, if things are getting a little too small. Um, it might make for some funny geometry later, but um, it really depends on your your end need here. And I'm trying not to get this to snap to one of those points. So I'm trying to avoid poly uh, triangles. So although no matter what, I'm probably going to have one right there. That's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and continue to click and do this. Right. And so I'm not going to do the whole leaf in real time because that would be epically boring for everyone involved. Right. And so, you know, this is a place where right, these polygons get pretty tight. I could continue down here if I want to. Um, I'm going to leave it the way it is for now. And I'm going to stop the tutorial now and I'm just going to go ahead and try and finish out some of the leaf or maybe just half of the leaf. I'm not going to do a symmetry. Um, just in terms of time, the, what, we're gonna, what I'm going to show you is going to have a similar effect um, on both sides, and so we'll just do one side. So I'm going to pause this and finish this up, and then, get, and then we can get going. So you should also finish your whole leaf. Okay, so I'm almost done modeling this leaf, and a few things have come up that I want to discuss. First, I want you to notice how jankety my mesh is, right? Their polygons are all different sizes and shapes. We're going to fix that in a minute. But the bigger issue is in this lower section here, I have a whole bunch of subdivisions because this is a huge lobe. But then as I get into the body of the leaf, right, these subdivisions get smaller and smaller. 
And I have to decide whether I want to have all four of these edges, this edge here, this edge here, and these two that I've already extended up. If I want all four of those edges to go all the way up, um, you know, to the edge of the sleeve. And that um, really that there isn't enough. I don't need that additional geometry there. Maybe in this section, I need a little bit more. Maybe I need one line to come up here. Um, and so in order to dump these lines and you've seen, you can see I've done it over here and actually I need to finish this up too. Um, but occasionally we need to make triangles, right? The goal is to have, when you're modeling this way, is to have as many quadrangles as possible and only have triangles when absolutely necessary. Um, and you shouldn't have anything that has more than four sides. Um, you can do it, but it makes it bend and fold and subdivide in a very strange way. And so you want to make sure like this polygon is really out of whack. So right, I'm going to need to come through here. And, you know, what I might do is, um, you know, run this over to here, right, which actually turns this into a really strangely shaped quadrangle, right? But it is a quad now. Um, and then with this one, you know, do I, where do I run it to and where do I create that triangle, right? Because no matter what, I'm going to be creating four sides, but eventually I need to get, I need to have one side fewer. And, you know, I don't think there's necessarily a spot in here that is going to be better than another. Um, so I may just run it down here and then cut over to a corner. Um, you know, I might want to look at, or I could do, you know, this one here because that's a tiny little subdivision. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll just take this one up and have it truncate there, right? So then I've got, actually, that's a hexagon. Hold on a second. I have to accept it on. Okay, so the question is, where am I going to put this one at? And you'll notice that if I come from this corner, there's one, two, three, right? Um, so this would be the fourth. So that's a quad. Um, and actually, it might work just to make a quad here. I thought I needed a triangle, but it looks like, look at that. They're beautiful, right? So now, <laughs> so now I've got those quads there. Awesome. So let's look at a place where we need a triangle. Um, there's this spot here where, right, currently we... We just have too much geometry. If I say one, two, three, four, that's one section. Um, and then there's this triangle. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. You know, it doesn't really matter which one I do. Um, and by the way, I guess I didn't mention this. Um, but uh, these, um, the polygon pen can work like the knife tool as well. So, right, if I want to subdivide um, some of these polygons, all I do is I click on one edge. And then I just drag over and click on another edge, and I've created a cut in that subdivision. If I want to cut multiple ones all at once, I can just click once, drag this over. You can see that white line. Click, and then I've created a whole bunch of new subdivisions there. Right, And so um, those are um, some of the ways that this, can, this tool can also be used. So let's go back down here. And... We'll say, okay, where do I need to jump, dump geometry for this? Well, with this one, I definitely want to go, you know, further up. So let's go ahead and I'm going to click here. And I'm just going to come up to this edge for now. And then with this one, right, no matter what, I either need to go all the way up, as I said, or I need to dump some geometry somewhere. And so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to go ahead and I know that if I get to here, I can make a small triangle there where hopefully... It won't make a huge issue. All right, so I've got that one there. And it looks like I might actually, yeah, it's going to be a triangle right there. All right, and then this um, edge can actually just go ahead and I could connect it here to create that triangle. I could also just continue it on up and bend it around to make, um, to split these subdivisions one more time. And because it's so easy to drag this line all the way over here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and do this and just go all the way out to the edge of the loop. Now, you know, the, this is all, you know, there's no right or, I mean, there's some wrong answers to this, but there's a lot of different potential right answers. And really, you're not going to know um, until you've had, you know, significantly more experience modeling what's, you know, what's the best option. I'm trying to help 
here. With this one, what I might do is split this and then go up this way so we have more subdivisions here and not double the subdivisions on this next one and no triangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. Somewhere in there, you'll see I have that little triangle now. Um, but now I can just come out here and once I get a couple of these angled ones done, I can just shoot all the way up. Now well, let's go to here and then from here to here. And you'll notice I'm not, and then with this last one, right, I'm just going to come on up here, oops, and just go until it, right, doesn't make any sense to go further. And then I'm just going to come up and finish this, oops, finish this one up here. Okay, I think I've gotten all the problem areas taken care of. Let's just double check and make sure. Right, the geometry over here, <laughs> I could probably add some subdivisions to this. Um, and, you know, but we're just, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And this will be a good example of what happens when, you know, things aren't quite as even as they should be. But again, if I wanted to add subdivisions, I can just shoot, you know, why don't I do one here? I'm just going to shoot this down here to this point. Right, so now I've got another triangle, but I do have all of these other quads. And that's going to give me a bit more geometry to work with in there. Okay, so now you'll see, one, my view is rotated a little bit. Um, if you do that, you just go to frame default, and it will square it up for you. Um, and so then the other thing is, right, these are all, some of these are sandwiched together, some of them are spread out, and going through and manually working on all of these would be something of a nightmare. And so we're going to use a tool we haven't used before, and that is the brush tool down here. It's the modeling brush. So I'm going to select the modeling brush, and what I want to, by default, the mode is set to smear. Um, I have my thing set to, you know, my strength and radius set to 50% and 30 centimeters. Um, if I have it set to smear, what it does is it basically will smear the mesh around, right? So if there's little spots here, and you'll notice this is more of a soft selection, right? It allows me to more um, organically mush this mesh around much like a sculpt tool, but, you know, it's it's more limited, in it, but the, for this use, it works really well, right? So the first thing I might want to do is come around here and just, you know, if there's spots where I miss these points, this is a much more intuitive way to manipulate this, right? Um, if I set my radius too big, it's going to be mush all over the place, but this really allows me to drag the mesh around a little bit. And note that, you know, it's going to, if I grab this whole corner, it's going to be the entire thing. Right? But, um, so, you know, so maybe I smeared around so it fit, the fits a little bit better to my base image. But then we have all this internal geometry that's a mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to use the smooth option here, the smooth mode. What the smooth mode is going to do is wherever our radius is, it's going to try and evenly space the... Um, the vertices that are in that radius. So if I click on this and drag, right, it's actually going to spread out and kind of relax and even out some of that mesh, right? And so this allows me to take this junky uh, mesh and to use this tool to really take and start to spread out and even some of these objects. Now, occasionally you'll notice that strange things begin to happen. If that happens, just undo that and make sure that as you're as you're doing the the this smoothing, you um, either avoid that point or come at it from a different angle. And if you see it happening, just release the mouse so you don't undo all the work you just did. But you know, just you can just click and you can just continue to spread these out. And you can see that this one's a little bit fussy down here. Um, and maybe if I even some of these other ones out, it might work. And if I come up here, right, I'm going to get much more even subdivisions inside there. And you'll notice that it pretty much keeps the edges um, intact, right? They stay in place, but it allows me to, to really even out this internal geometry, right? And you'll notice I got a little bit crazy over there on that edge and on this edge. And so I might need to go back with the smear tool and just really gently work on it. If I make my radius larger, right, it's going to try and... Um, even out and spread a bigger chunk of geometry. Now you have to be careful because sometimes things like that happen. So I'm going to undo a couple steps. And you do have to click and drag to get this to work, 
And so sometimes you can just wiggle a little bit. If you go over too much, it's fine. Um, you know, and so it really depends on where you're working and how much, um, you know, spread or softness you need to do, right? Um, you can see that it is, it does manipulate the edges a bit, but again, right, this helps a little bit. And so now that I've done that, I can go back to really any tool. The polygon pen's great because it's so easy to just, you know, select these points without having to select them and then select them. And because this is weird, part of the problem is that I actually have this object that isn't four-sided here. Right? This is a place that I missed. So what I need to do is actually come in here and add a triangle somewhere. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add one here. Right, And so now this should... Oh, that had seven sides. So hold on a second. It's six sides. So what do I need to do? So maybe I need to... Here we go. If I drop it down here, that at least gives me um two two uh, uh, <clears throat> uh four-sided or two quads and granted that's a little bit weird shape but it's there so now if i go back to my brush to smooth this it should smooth it more right ex in an expected way right it's trying to snug all of these things up together and make that a little bit nicer okay Right, so this is a much more even mesh, and you'll see that there's this other point that's giving me some problems down here. Um, that for whatever reason, I don't know why, it always gets drawn to that other point, so I'm just going to pull that one up. This one I could also, right, you know, I could pull it down so it's more level if I want it to be. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then I may want to use the smear mode um, to over smear is, um, right, to just nudge these down a little bit further back to where I wanted them. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter to me because um, this is just a demo, but right, if you're working on your own model, you might want to, to do that. Okay, so now we've got a much more even, smooth, well-spaced mesh to work with, which is what we want. Okay, so now that we've done that, we need to start manipulating this in three dimensions. And so I'm gonna go ahead and, and save this, um, and not save it as misspelled test. I'm just gonna save this as a work copy. Um, and, you know, I'm gonna say work, and maybe I'll call it um, final mesh, right? So I've got the mesh um, flat, and now what we'll do is I've saved that. And what I'm gonna do at this point is say is now save another version um, called, uh, uh, I'm just going to call it deform or something like that. So I'm going to go save as, and I'm going to say leaf complex underscore deform. 